My name's Ryan and you're watching That Random Geeky Guy. Turn on the man cave. So uh, this is new, that was a bit of a different intro to the videos, wasn't it? Uh, you join me in the new kind of updated man cave or gaming room, uh, if you like. I wanted to give you guys a quick tour, so there's been a big move around, uh, hence the video right at the start here. Uh, I think it looks absolutely fantastic, um, it, was, it was quite a mission, uh, and it kind of pulls together a lot of my hobbies. So when I call myself that random geeky guy, you guys are about to learn that I'm probably the geekiest guy you've ever met. So let's give you a tour of the newly designed man cave and gaming room from that random geeky guy. Okay, so I'm going to start by apologising for the lighting. Uh, it's not really designed for videography, it's, uh, it's more to create an atmosphere. But regardless, let's get into it and talk you through some of the bits and pieces that are in here. So let's start with the gaming PC itself, let's get that out of the way. So many of you will have seen this already, uh, it's uh, running in a Fractal Design Meshify S2 case, recently got this, highly recommend it. I must emphasise as well, a lot of the products that you're going to see as we go through this video will be included with Amazon Associate paid links in the video description below if you wish to support the channel. Anyway, this is currently running on a Ryzen 5 3600s. It's sat on an X570, um, an X570 motherboard from ASUS. It's an ASUS Strix X570F gaming motherboard. It's in preparation for the replacement CPU that's coming. Uh, I will explain that when it arrives. We've got um, 3200 megahertz uh, DDR4, 32 gig of RAM over 48 sticks there with, uh, with the green and blue theme that you'll see throughout the room running through. You've got an EVGA uh, KO edition of the RTX 2070 Super. There's no intention of changing that anytime soon. In the case, in the front, it's difficult to see from this angle, but you've got three light loop fans from Corsair. You've got uh, one of their maglev ones in the back. It's a bit of a mix. And up at, top, up at the top there, you've got their H100 AIO with two more uh, of their fans sat on there as well. Uh, and the lighting theme continues here. So again, we've got the blue and the green as well as some RG strip lights in there as well. Uh, and then that's all run through this 27 inch uh, 144 hertz from 144 hertz monitor from Acer. Uh, it's an IPS panel, uh, one millisecond response time. Absolutely love this panel, really, really good. Uh, we've got a K60 LUX keyboard uh, and a Razer Basilisk uh, V2 mouse. There's that little uh, stats display that we looked at recently. Uh, and then we've got the Razer Kraken Tournament Edition headset here. So, that is the gaming PC. And it's only a very small part uh, of, of what is quite a detailed room. Oh, also not to forget, it's also sat on this large mouse pad with the, the RGB strip all the way around the outside and this geometric, geometric pattern that I think looks really cool uh, on the mat itself. Okay, oh and I've got a Logitech uh, webcam up there as well. So as we kind of go broadly into the rest of the room, you've probably already noticed all this stuff up on the wall. So you might not know, but I'm a bit of a comic book collector as well. Um, not to the extreme, there's only, there's only kind of a few, but just a few that kind of catch my eye. Um, things like, for example, uh, up here on the left hand side, we've got some DC. Uh, and this is the, uh, the issue of Batman that was released on the day I was born. So uh, I, uh, for my 30th birthday, I went to Amsterdam. I went to CIA Comics. You have to check them out if you're ever in Amsterdam. Probably one of the best comic book stores I've ever been to in the world. Um, and I picked this up when I was there. Uh, and then we've got other things like, for example, uh, the very first uh, Ms. Marvel comic before, um, before she became Captain Marvel. Um, 
There's the very first ever standalone Batgirl comic. Uh, and then some really impos uh, impressive artwork from, from the likes of uh, Jock and Snyder, um, all the way up through here. Uh, and this might be a bit controversial, but there's also a script from The Big Bang Theory, which is signed by the cast. Um, not really a comic book thing, but it's one of my collections and I really love it. Uh, I've got a picture, it's really difficult to make out with the lighting, but there's a picture here of me, my wife, uh, and my nephew um, heading on over to the Leicester Square Lego shop. Uh, and that, I guess, leads in quite nicely to some other parts in the room. So you'll notice below there's a piece of artwork here to represent a Lego man. And then as you pan around the room, you'll notice there's a load of displays that have a lot of Lego in them. So I'm an absolute massive Lego collector. Um, in fact, what you see here is probably about a fifth of my collection. Uh, over here next to the PC, there's a Saturn V rocket, uh, a load of key rings and all sorts of bits and pieces behind there. Pretty much every single Lego brick head ever made is in this room. Um, bar a couple uh, that I didn't really want in the collection, but there is loads there. And then as we move around the room, you'll find all different kind of things from Wally in there uh, to the London Double Decker bus, uh, as well as Yellow Submarine from the Beatles, Millennium Falcon, loads of Harry Potter stuff. And as we spin around, you've got other Lego collectibles, minifigures, some of them are quite rare, uh, some of the um, kind of Flintstones, uh, SpongeBob all those sort of bits and pieces, and then Minecraft at the bottom here. VW Bus, VW um, Beetle. You've got the latest Yoda releases. Again, the Big Bang Theory uh, and Friends. Uh, and then some Marvel minifigures up here. And this is probably my prized possession when it comes to comic books. This is a first edition of the new Avengers comics, which came in line with the movies with a uh, limited edition variant cover. There's only a thousand of these in, a wo in the world. You couldn't actually buy them. They were given away to any comic book store who ran a promo for the new Avengers. And this particular one is not only um, cased uh, by CGC, uh, it's also part of their signature series and is signed by Stan Lee himself with a grading of 9.4. I absolutely love this. It's a massive prized possession of mine. As you go back across to the left, there's some brick heads in the back there. Again, quite, quite a rare one. It's from New York Comic Con, um, and it's, it's a, a rare brick head pack, which has remained sealed. Up on top, we've got some space themes. We've got the latest Mario sets. These are quite cool, a little bit different. Um, we've got the Tumblr from the Dark Knight, as well as a rock climber, uh, and then just some, some other bits and pieces, including more comics out the back there. Uh, at the top here, a bit of Pac-Man and a New York sign. New York's uh, close to my heart. I've been lucky enough uh, to have been there many, many times and it's uh, very close to my heart. But as we pan around the rest of the room, what you're going to be picking up a lot of is the RGB lighting. So let's get into that. So running all the way along the back of here, across this desk, across this daybed, which uh, also acts as a sofa, there's a Philips Hue strip light that's going all the way across there set to the green that matches in with the system, uh, as does the main ceiling light, which is also a Philips Hue uh, with a comic book design on. Um, and then we've got another strip light that's going all the way up here, uh, all the way across the top and uh, along the ceiling. This was quite interesting, so it's not Philips Hue, um, but what I've done here is this particular strip light is housed, it's really difficult to see on camera, but it's housed in this, met uh, this aluminium casing with uh, a diffusing layer on top. So whilst the camera picks up the hotspots a lot more, uh, with the naked eye, it's not like that at all. It's much more diffused. Um, I'll put a link to this stuff in the, in the video description, but it was just an idea to kind of run it up and over the top of the, uh, top of the ceiling. It just kind of looks a little bit different, and I think it's quite cool. Uh, that same strip is used around the outside of this display cabinet, which is why you see that blue kind of haze. And then we've just got normal RGB lighting sat in the, uh, in the back of this display cabinet and in the back of this one. Um, now, beyond that, uh, when we're gaming, these display cabinets turn off. So uh, I am going to say that, that buzzword that everybody hates, turn off display lights. So there we go. So this then drops down into gaming mode where these guys are off. Uh, and then we can sit down uh, and set up ready for the next game. When we've finished, it's all connected together. So turn off the man cave. So something you're going to notice quite early on is it is quite a tight space. 
So we've really utilized kind of every single inch here. So I want to kind of reflect back to this desk. Um, this desk was custom made, uh, like a bespoke desk for me, uh, by my father-in-law because we had such a tight space for this to, uh, to fit into, but I wanted to maximize that space. Um, for those who've seen the um, Fractal Design Meshify S2, it isn't the smallest case in the world. It's got a fairly decent sized footprint. It's quite deep because it is designed long-term to have um, uh, custom loop water cooling in here. Uh, hence why you can see those uh, bracket holders down the back. But as part of having that in there, it makes the footprint a bit bigger. Then you add in the 27 inch monitor into this restricted space, it's quite hard. We were gonna go down the route of using, you know, those Alex draw kind of setups. Yes, there are some drawers down there, but they're not Alex drawers, um, purely because the depth didn't work with the, uh, with the space here in the corner. So I say, my, uh, my father-in-law kindly uh, agreed to build me this bespoke desk. He did an absolutely fantastic job of it as well. There's a, you can't see it, but down around the back of here is a cable management panel where a lot of the cables are all connected in um, so that uh, you keep it all nice, clean and tidy. We know how that works. But what he's done as part of that is he's also grooved into the back of the desk. I don't know how well you can see it, but slits to allow the cables to slip down behind a bit easier. Um, and it's just really kind of great amount of thought that's gone into making it work. And it works really well in the space. The, the, the chair fits in quite nicely and it's actually really comfortable to, uh, to game in. In terms of this day bed, it's quite useful for us because um, uh, just in case we ever have guests over, uh, they need somewhere to sleep uh, outside of this kind of COVID area that we're in. Um, so this actually, believe it or not, pulls out into a double bed. There's enough space for this here to come all the way out. There's two mattresses and it becomes a double bed. But in the day, it is a nice, soft, comfy couch um, with, uh, with pillows all the way across the back just to keep it all nice and comfortable. Um, but again, really useful. There's storage all in the bottom and it's just maximizing what we do in, uh, in what is quite a small space. Over here, uh, there is the assistant that shall not be named, um, which is controlling uh, everything that you see in the room. Uh, we use that throughout the whole house. Uh, we actually find it to be really, really useful, provided you buy all of the extras and all the other bits and pieces that go with it. Now, obviously, all of the Lego and all the comics, that didn't happen overnight. That's all kind of been a collection over time, uh, which, which has kind of all come together. Now, this kind of collection and setup used to be in the room that you saw me filming previously with the computer in, but because of how much it's grown, it kind of made sense for it to move into one of the larger rooms in the house, uh, just in a way to, to make it all fit and make it look good. So that's why it kind of ended up in, in this room. Sorry about the shaky camera. This is me doing it and my... Uh, stabilizer Osmo was out of battery. So uh, yeah, you're stuck with this, I'm afraid. Um, so yeah, it all moved into here. It was quite a successful move. And I say from a time perspective, the only thing that was really time consuming, I guess, was for my father-in-law building that desk. Uh, but I say, I think he did an absolutely brilliant job. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I'll get my hand out of the way. Uh, and fits in there really, really well. The uh, the bed is is an IKEA job. So uh, yeah, that was just putting that together because obviously uh, with IKEA assembly is required. Um, but again, once that was all done, um, with what started with some quite poor measurements by myself when we very first looked at doing this room and bought the wrong things, to actually then getting it all into the right shape and the right size, and it, it all kind of fits in quite well. It's a calming space, it's a nice place, it's a good place to be, it's a good place to game. From an internet connection perspective, I'm still using mesh Wi-Fi, um, and I'm getting about 700 meg uh, connection through this. Um, actually, at the router, it's about... 860 to 900 so we're losing a little bit through the mesh system but it's still 700 can't complain it's working really really well um, and yeah that's that's kind of the room so let's talk cost uh, the desk is is an unusual one because obviously we've got the cost of materials it was about 50 60 pounds for the cost of materials but in terms of actually getting the desk built my father-in-law was kind enough to do it for me if you have the skills or you have or you know somebody who has the skills who's happy to help you out that's where the price stays if not, you're obviously gonna be paying labor to have the desk put together. You might not be in my situation. You might be in a position where actually you can build the room around your desk, meaning that you can choose your desk first and then build the room because this is quite a tight space. That unfortunately wasn't an option. I had to put in the necessities that I needed. So you've probably seen in the tour that you know behind me is a, a chest of drawers and behind the camera is, is a wardrobe that's got all my work shirts and all, all my work clothing in it. Uh, and this is just, clothing again, so that had to have space, that had to go somewhere. Um, so that came, it came into here. 
we, we, we always like to have a guest bed uh, outside, of this, uh, outside of this world that we find ourselves in at the moment. We like to have guests over um, and they need somewhere to sleep. So uh, this had to happen, but we had to find something that was, was adaptable to the space. Um, so that's why we, we came up with, with this bed solution. I'll be honest, these beds, they do, I say they're not that expensive. This was all in with the mattresses and everything like that. It's about five, 600 pounds, which some may say is quite a bit of money for a guest bed, but it's very adaptable, like I said. Um, lighting. So you might be tempted to say, well, look, Philips Hue, that's kind of a luxury. You are paying more for that. And I must admit, I kind of agree. Um, you know, to an extent, you, you very much are. Uh, one of the things I do love about Philips Hue is their integration with their um, kind of replacement light switches. So I, I didn't show you in the video, but the light switch into here is one of the little Philips Hue wireless light switches. In fact, we use them all over the house. They're, they're quite useful. Um, so I, I do like being able to use those. So it means that we've got a core amount of lighting within here that can, can be controlled by that. Um, if you've not used those before, in fact, let me just grab the remote so I can actually show you so you can see what it looks like. Um, and if you've not used them before, you'll kind of get an idea of, of what they're about. So this is the little adapter here. Um, so with the power switch that you see here, you can actually program it depending on how many times you click it to how the lights react. So you can set it, for example, so when you click it once, it comes on to the lighting that you, uh, you normally have, but then you could have it set so if you push it twice, it just goes to bright lights three times if you go to a different color, whatever it might be. So they're quite adaptable. So I do like that because then you still keep the core light functionality, especially when you're putting something into the main ceiling lights. The other RGB strips, I say, I'm gonna put some links in the video descriptions along with the aluminum trunking that I've got these into here. They were really reasonable, you know, less than 20 pounds, um, completely work with the digital assistants. Uh, and they're actually individually addressable LEDs. So whilst I've got the ones up over the ceiling set to blue, they're, they're individually addressable. So you can use all sorts of different things. They've got different themes and that that you can control with an app. Um, so yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. So there's one there, one behind me, and there will be another one going up above Mario that I showed you. Um, it's just that's not, not here yet and not present. So there's last little bits and pieces to do. But I say they're less than 20 pounds each. They work really well. And I say they, they connect your Wi-Fi network and work with the, uh, a digital assistant uh, with the inbuilt remote that's built into the actual cable or through an app on your phone as well. Uh, and then other display cabinets, there's a lot of IKEA going on in here. So the glass cabinets you saw, they're about 50 pounds each from IKEA, works really well. And they do lighting kits that go in the top, exact same principle. So all in all, it isn't significantly expensive to achieve this. It's just make sure you plan, make sure you actually say to yourself, what do I need? What's the necessity? If like me, you've got a lot of necessities, you're gonna to have to compromise in some places. I would love to have an absolutely huge desk, multi-monitor setup, but actually, A, I wouldn't really use a multi-monitor setup, uh, and B, I am limited by space. So I was lucky enough to get this bespoke desk that I really like and fits in really well. But for you, you might be able to go, right, I'm gonna start with the desk, that's what's important to me. Have a massive desk and then fit everything else around you. So like I said, number one, make sure you plan. Do your research, look into the products that you're, that you're gonna go for. I did a lot of research to make sure this was gonna work for me. Again, that strip up over the ceiling, I wanted that, it's really different. Um, but I didn't wanna have really intensive LEDs that are just kind of in your face all the time. So having that diffusing strip made, made, made a huge difference. Uh, part of me was considering, well, what about like nano leaves? So take it up a wall and across the ceiling a bit. But they're exceptionally expensive. If you're working on a budget, it's just not feasible, you know, to do any kind of real, realistic, decent display with them, you're, you're well over 500 pounds to get anything, uh, anything that's realistic. So yeah, I really think that as long as you plan and you budget and you research the, uh, the equipment that you use, you can get a really good effect. Um, if you've got any questions at all about what I've done with the room here, um, if you're into comics, if you're into Lego, Obviously, if you're into PCs, any questions whatsoever, stick them in the comments section below. I really, really appreciate it. I love reading them. And you'll see I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. I might not be able to do that forever, but I'm, I'm doing my very, very best. Uh, other than that, thank you everybody for your support. If you want to support us further, head on over to uh, that randomgeekyguy.com. Pick up one of these Founder Edition t-shirts. It massively supports the channel. Uh, please like, please subscribe, and please share with your friends. Other than that, I'll see you next time.